Hey guys, it's Vishy here. You watch Nick Sapien. I'm going to be telling you about ABS or the anti-lock braking system. It's also known as the anti-skid braking system. It's used in most of the vehicles including cars, buses and even in aircraft. It helps in prevention of an accident. It helps better control of the steering while braking. It works on the principle of threshold or cadence braking. It decreases the braking distance and also gives you better control over the steering while braking. Watch the video if no more. If you like my videos, do subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. The ABS we see today is not what it used to be. It has evolved slowly for the last 100 years or so. In 1908, J.E. Francis developed the slip prevention regulator for rail vehicles. In 1920, French automobile and aircraft pilot Gabriel Voisin modulated the braking pressure on his aircraft brakes to decrease the risk of slipping. Gabriel Voisin used a flywheel and a valve to improve the braking. In a normal situation, the drum and the flywheel would move at the same speed. But while braking, the drum would slow down along with the wheel, but the flywheel was going at a faster rate. This ensured a valve opened and a brake fluid was released. This brake fluid would bypass the master cylinder and go into a local reservoir. And this valve was made in such a way so that it would open only while the wheel was turned. This ensured a 30% increase in efficiency of braking in aircrafts. The pilots were able to engage the brakes completely rather than slowly engaging the brakes which was done previously. First proper recognition of the ABS came with the German engineer Karl Basel. He developed a system for modulating braking power and he officially patented it in the year 1928. Then by the time of the early 1950s, ABS was used extensively in aircrafts. In 1958, the Royal Enfield Super Meteor motorcycle was used by the Road Research Laboratories to test the Maxurate anti-lock brakes. The experiments demonstrated that anti-lock brakes can be of great value to motorcycles for which skidding is involved in a high proportion of accidents. Stopping distances were reduced in most of the tests compared with lock wheel braking, particularly on slippery surfaces in which the improvement could be as much as 30%. Enfield's technical director at the time, Tony Wilson-Jones, saw little future in the system. However, it was not put into production by the company. The first fully electronic anti-lock braking system was developed in the late 1960s for the Concorde aircraft. The modern ABS was developed by Mario Palazzini, also known as Mr. ABS, in the Fiat Research Center and is now standard in every car. The system was called anti-skid and the patent was sold to Bosch who named it ABS for anti-skid braking system. When you apply the brake in your vehicle, it causes the disc to get locked. This causes the stoppage of the rotation of the wheel, which results in the slippage between the road and the wheel and the vehicle stops due to friction. There are two types of velocities involved here. One is the rotational velocity that happens due to the rotational movement of the wheel and the second is the translational velocity, which takes place due to the motion of the wheel in the direction of the car. In stable non-slip rolling conditions, the sum of the rotational velocity and the translation velocity has to be zero. And to prevent the vehicle from slipping, the wheels need to be rolling at all times. When you turn the front wheel of your car, the direction of translation velocity doesn't change, but the direction of rotation velocity changes. But I told you, say, in the sum of rotational and translation has to be equal and opposite. So the translation velocity gets inclined and as a result of which the car turns in the direction you turn the steering. This is not applicable for steering at braking. The wheel stops spinning. So the rotation velocity is zero. The translation velocity is straight. Even though the wheel is turned, it continues the original motion. So it slides in a straight line. While braking on a surface with different zones of traction, all four wheels are subjected to different frictional forces. So there is a torque which results in an uncontrollable spin. And ABS prevents the wheel from completely getting blocked up. There is a modulator unit and four speed sensors attached to all four wheels. So when the wheel is going to get locked up, the modulator unit acts and releases the brake pad on the wheel. The intermittent braking causes intermittent rotational velocity which helps steering function to work even while braking. The ABS decreases the braking distance too. The coefficient of friction between the road and the tire varies with slip. For perfect rolling, the value of frictional rolling coefficient is zero. In intermittent slipping, sliding friction comes into place. 
you can look into the graph and you can find that the peak value of frictional coefficient is at 12% slip ratio. Without ABS, mainly sliding friction is a frictional coefficient, but with ABS, it adjusts the brake pressure to keep slip ratio near 12%, so decreased braking distance. I told you that a car that is going on a surface with different levels of traction while braking goes into an indefinite spin, but while using an electronic braking system, the relative slip of each wheel is measured. The decreased brake pressure is applied on the tire with higher grip, thereby decreasing friction. So the car is stable. So guys, that is it. I guess you have got a hang of the anti-lock braking system or the ABS. For more such videos, do subscribe to Next Sapien. This is Vishy signing off.